and welcome back everybody it's that time of the week it's that tuna time as we are back with sparkling tuna cup number five i'm of course your host light vip and with me as always recently but maybe for the last time i don't know uh we have the one the only jackson chase oh. hello <laughs> it's very blue today isn't it Ah, uh, it is very blue, it is very blue, and, um... <laughs> Sponsored by the color blue. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've outgrown the fish. But... <laughs> yes, we're here. We have another sparkling tuna cup. Mm -hmm. Light pie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we... wait, I... and as, as tradition, I have not joined the lobby. I was, about, I was about to say, man, you're gonna join the lobby, what's going on? I'm in. I'm in. Okay, okay. Oh god, we are loading into our first series of the day, but it's again, it's great to have you back, Chase. But what I was alluding to was, I don't know how much more we're going to have you here. I know you've been saying some controversial things, and uh, <laughs> um, no, but you're uh, you're getting a full time job, right? I have a job. Yeah. It's yeah. Bill Gates saw me casting for Cranky Ducklings, and he said, "I like the cut of his jib, or the what is it, the the jib of his jab." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, moving okay. up in the world, like nice, nice. <sighs> um, so at, as we get into this, the, uh, are are you still gonna be available for some spark for some tuna casts? Or? Uh, if they, not if they go to two thirty in the morning. Like the, <laughs> yeah, so maybe it depends how fast people cheese. Mm. But I'll I'll try and come up when I can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, as we get into it, I guess we're just we're just gonna dive straight into our first series and spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Hardwire LE, we have our finalist from last week, still representing himself, but still an amazing Korean Protoss player. It is Chance. And spawning in the top right position, it is your Hong Kong Zerg player who is currently playing for Team Juggernauts. It is Go Go Joey. Do you like that light? Oh, you, I, I brought you, his Wikipedia page up. What? <laughs> you, you needed his Wikipedia page. <laughs> I don't know. I'm glad you introduced first. I, I don't know these. We've gone global, right? You've, you've got too big for little old Chase. I don't know any of these teams. What are you on about? What I was about to say is that we got our boy Joey back because I don't know if you know this, but Go Go Joey, he was like one of three players who would ever win a Grand Platypus Open. You know, uh, before the win tuna. The yeah, b before the tuna, we had the platypus and. Back then, last year, like, Gogo -Go Joey was, like, kind of like the prince of our tournament, you know? The, the king was Mia Micah, the prince was Gogo -Go Joey, and they'd go back and forth week after week. Um, but this year, he's been on a bit of a hiatus, you know? He, he's also got a full-time job as, I believe, like, a lab assistant or something like that. Um, he's working in the scientific field, and we haven't seen as much Joey. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see just how, as he was kind of that the top of the range of um, the Grand Planipus Open, which was the Sierra Lee tournament. Um, thank happily we've expanded, and we'll see how he goes against some more international competition. So, mm. a bit of sea pride on the line, you know. See how he does. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was a pun. See how he does. But, but, <laughs> but yes, um, and his his first opponent here is one of the strongest players, you know, that we've seen historically in Sparkling Tuna so far, it's Chance. Yeah, it's one of those feels bad moments where if you don't play too often, like, uh, seeding wise, you're not very high up in our tournament. So he's already up against the finalists. He's already up against one of the best Protoss we have in our regular series. So uh, <laughs> my heart goes out to Joey. We'll see how he does. We may end up in a long series. I know you didn't want one, but if you remember, uh, infamously, Goku Joey was a part of a very long series that held up DreamHack for like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of, of do you remember um, Rex versus Nice? Yeah. On Jack and Arthur. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what came to mind for some reason, but I hope it's not as long as that one. Um, <laughs> hey, we'll have to see. Double head depth opening from Chance here. Um, I'm not sure, like, did you catch. Did Joey just take. Since he's, he's unnatural, natural first up, or did he get natural block? Did you? I uh, was a pro blocking it. Yeah. Yeah. Pro block, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I guess looking at the position of this third, it's, it's kind of... You can take the triangle third, um, if you want us to Zerg, but 
Um, with air units, it can be a bit abusable, and especially with Adepts, because they have that shade ability. Mm -hmm. um, another build we've been seeing a little bit more often by Protoss players is the um, Hero has been doing actually some Adept Immortal builds, where you attack mm -hmm. the third base, shade in the main, and lift the Immortals in the main. So, mm -hmm. um, third base here by Joey, it's a bit more kind of safer, a bit more standard. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting to see how he deals with um, the air units here as we see Chance going for a third base. So looks like it could be a long game indeed. Oh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, immediately the Lings are here to deny the third base. Chance is aware of them, so they're kind of like just facing off against each other, denying each other. At the same time, Oracle gets in and, oh, the Oracle will get a couple of kills. Okay, only one drone up, only one so far. Up. Uh oh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, sniping a couple, uh, a bit of lava there too. As, um,. As Oracles, I believe it's an energy-based uh, attack. You know, they can take those lava out. Uh, these are Depths getting caught, and the probe really good catch up for Joey. We actually saw um, Chance went for that defensive shade when these Lings came into the third base. Not sure how committed Joey was. And in the end, like, it's looking like an almost perfect amount of Lings here, and he's going to delay the third for so much longer. Oh, yeah, even delays it again. So, sure, Joey did lose, a, you know, three drones earlier to that Oracle, but at least he's able to disrupt the economy of Chance regardless. Um, and I also wanted to like touch a little bit on like you were talking about, you know, how the meta is shifting a little bit, you know, Hero is doing his own thing. Of course, we have to bring up the fact that there is there is a new patch looming ahead of us. And, you know, this matchup is probably the, pat the, the matchup that gets influenced the most by that patch. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, it's a couple. It has been a, a Stargate opening, but um, a bit more ground orientated by Chansey is going for these, uh, these adepts. And, um, you know, Joey's been droning really hard. He only has nine links in the field. Most of it's just popping now. The Roach Run's not finished, so Chance at the very least is going to force out some links here and delay the droning. Yeah, exactly. Thankfully, he didn't get into a mineral line, but as you said, like, forces a bunch of links, forces not drones <laughs> from Gogo -Go Joey, so does deal some damage there, but ooh, Joey, I was curious as to what the purpose of this lair was going to be. Of course, he took a bunch of his gases, and it's going to be a Spire. It is a Spire light. You're pure... Uh, your um, building recognizing is on point as always. Thank you, thank you. Even though it looks like a sport roller currently, but yes, in the production tab, a lot of drones, uh, Ego Chamber, and Aspire. Um, what's the kind of dynamic? What do you think Joey's looking for with this this um, this kind of tech choice? And how do you think Chance will be able to react in his own tech choice? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those scenes where I'm sure Gogo Joey wanted to keep this hidden, right? And wanted to try and maybe surprise his opponent with a bunch of muters. Unfortunately, as Chance didn't just show us, but also showed jo Joey. He saw it <laughs> with the revelation. So <laughs> he just <laughs> chat sure. move, letting everyone know he knows. Um, so going for a meter switch, it, it's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult to find some damage. Yeah, I think it's also a very clever tactical move there by um by um Chance because it shows that even you know it shows if Joey's going to be committing to this swire, if he's going to cancel it, as we know Zerg can be very tricky with the tech tech switches. But the thing is, with the Oracle, it had that small nerf that delay the kind of um you know the the time that a revelation. What goes on for is a bit shorter, so you won't see it finished, but you can have a fair idea that you know Joey didn't cancel it and he's going to be committing here. But look at the production tablet. Oh my god, I, I mean, a couple of things that I'm kind of impressed by one, Chance called his bluff and didn't make any phoenixes, <laughs> like he had the opportunity to make some if he wanted to, um, but he opted not to. And Gogo -Go Joey isn't making any muters, right? Like he knew he, he got scouted, he's afraid of something like a phoenix switch. And Chance, mate, he just threw down eight more gateways, he's ready to go. Yeah, boy, here we go. Cannon per base, just in case it is, um, you know, commitment to those muters. But looking for to kind of take advantage of this Zerg, kind of tech into this kind of tricky air unit. It's not the greatest in a front on engagement. He's going to push in his fourth base here. But I've got to say, Joey's been pumping out roaches. I'm not sure how this is going to go, Light. Yeah, exactly. We'll see if he can get on top of that war prism, if he can try and bail it down. Meanwhile, as you said, he has a great army here on the ground. He's going to be able to push Chance back. Up. Oh. And here we go. It looks like Chance is just about out of force fields here. The stasis going off delaying some roaches, two stasis actually. And the Oracle is coming to help him as well, but the Queens are here to deal with those. Like, I think that Chance's push is going to get absolutely crushed here. Oh yeah, it's going to get completely shut down alongside these Queens. Gogo Joe was able to force everything back. Now he's going for a bit of a counterattack. We'll see how much he can do because of course we do have plenty of micro capability with these Immortals. We have Void Rays, we have Shield Batteries. Oh, but only one Shield Battery here, so this third base is not looking that strong. Yeah, the one thing Chance isn't down and out just yet because he's kept his core like tech units alive, and these two immortals oh. especially. Oh, <laughs> really big wiles, and with the void rate survives, and he's just gonna be able to barely hold on here. And now the kind of 
You know, the, the ball's in Joey's court. He's got to take the gases at his fourth base, and he's taking a fifth too, like, so he's looking pretty comfortable this game. Oh, yeah, this is feeling like classic Gogo -Go Joey. Like, I remember him playing a week after week against players like Pez and Ranger, and he loved to go Roach, Ravager, Ling Bane, and just kind of stay in this lair tech. Um, you know, the, the, it has its pros, it has its cons. He loves being that aggressive kind of player, but despite that, he is just kind of sitting back for a little bit here, working on his expansions. Um, and we have, mate, we got a ZVP. <laughs> we do indeed, we have a ZVP. We have a bit of, you know, skirmishes. A player's preparing to harass, knowing they're going to late game together. Um, curiously, it looks like, yeah, Chance is definitely going to be going for the start gate cannons soon. He's getting gases in his own fourth. And just going to try and, you know, keep Zerg busy at home. So, uh, pretty standard stuff. Zerg just taking, um, he's investing in quite a few roaches. And roaches, they can be ravages, but. They also, you know, have good attack potential for mid games. <laughs> yeah, it's not the roaches. They can be ravagers, but they're not. Uh, <laughs> so they're gonna get oh. pushed away here. Um, there was a nice cheeky move there. I don't know if you saw, but uh, but Joey he actually got one corruptor, and that one corruptor forced the recall in that war prism. So it's like it's kind of a cute move, and you know, it, it served its purpose, I guess. Something you don't see that often. Yeah, I didn't notice the recall, but I wasn't sure why until... Yeah, I guess that corrupted, yeah, yeah no, you pointed out. Um, that's, that's not a bad choice, really. It's a very small investment, and it keeps the Protoss... You know, normally when you harass something, you can just, like, set and forget, or just, like, you know, be on your way. Um, it keeps the chance a bit more active, and having to watch his poor prison. And meanwhile... This is a very strong tier one army moving out across the map for Joey. Oh yeah, he's pushing out hard here. He's basically maxed out at this point. We do have some side events. We do have an overcharge and the first disruptor is about to come out. Yeah, here oh. we go. It looks like, oh, some Phoenix coming to lift their Ravager. These Banes are going to be you know, key here, but disruptor, half decent hit. But like, there's not many force fields left for chance. Oh, not many at all. The Bailings are trying to roll in. They kind of get into the mineral line, but not really. And now that overcharge, sorry, that, that destructor shot, it's going to reset. And I don't think Gogo -Go Joey has enough. Yeah, yeah, just as he starts retreating, his plus two range just finishes up there, so um, kind of unfortunate anti-time. Maybe it was the time he was trying to get before Protoss fully entrenched his fourth base position, but now it looks like Chance wants to go on the offensive, and again, Joey is stuck on tier one. Yeah, exactly. We'll see if he can have enough to just swarm this army, because like, Jesus, there are just so many immortals here. We have those disruptors coming out. It's still pretty terrifying for Protoss, but again, he's pushing deep into creep, and there's a the potential that he may even get surrounded. Yeah, again, especially with these sentries only have a couple of force fields left. Disruptor throwing in a ball, not connecting. These reinforcements getting picked up from the back, and it's looking like a good start here of this engagement for Joey, but Chance is marking hard, but it's a lot of Zerg light. Oh my god, the War Prism gets sniped just like that. The Queens are coming into play as well. Almost every single Immortal goes down, and without that War Prism, like, uh, everything, it looks like Gogo Joey's gonna hold. Yeah, it looks like he does. That Ravager flank coming under fire just towards the end there, but there's just so many Zerg, and these Stalkers are find it so hard to trade against Ling-based armies. Meanwhile, run by at the fifth base, and that mobility of the Lings will let him clean that up. But then again, this fourth base is in trouble, in trouble again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, Gogo Joey sent his entire army to clean up those Lings, so the Queens were left exposed. So a bunch of the Queen count did get reset, but it doesn't even matter. Gogo Joey holds onto his fourth, holds onto every single base. And again, he survives. Can he counterattack from here is kind of the big question. I would kind of hope so. Again, there's only, like, when it comes to that high-tech units, there's only a single disruptor. Yeah, that's right. You know, it looks like this, this skirmish has been decent for Chance. He hasn't kind of um, done that great. He's been trading. But the problem is, you know, Zerg's trading tier one. They lose a couple of Ravages, they, but they lose a lot of, you know, Veilings and Lings, you know, which is not very the most expensive units. Where every time Chance is pushed out, he's lost his big, you know, hardening Immortals, Archons, and Disruptors. So these trades, you know, there's an opportunity for Joey if he wants to jump on top yet. But it looks like he's taking the passive route, going for that Great Aspire. Yeah, and I think it's kind of okay for him. Um, I say kind of because I do think there's a big opportunity for him to push out across the map. Just because I just realized that Chance, he's only working on one robot. Like, that's why he's having a hard time replacing all of his high-tech units. He just doesn't have the production. He's making one disruptor at a time. So if, if Gogo Joy maxed out right now, which I think he could, like, I, I think Chance would just die. Uh, depending on the disruptor shots, don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Yeah, Chance, he's got 10 gateways here, like, and that could ex also explain, you know, one of the reasons he has such a gateway heavy army. He's got a lot of stalkers, he's been walking in charge lots, and it's like he's going very you know, ground-orientated um, 
slightly off meta kind of build here and he's got the zealot run base queued up as well but you know joey's looking really really good so far once his greater spire comes out unless he gets some extra stargates or something there's another stargate now it's gonna be hard to deal with this great brood lord transition yeah exactly and even though chance doesn't know about the brood lord transition he's kind of getting ready for it in a way getting ready for that sky toss transition is it going to be fast enough though is it going to be good enough I don't know because the Corruptors are coming out now. The Broodlords aren't going to be too far behind them. Yeah, and we see Chance is expanding to the, the bottom right here. And something that we've touched on before, like I'm not sure on the stream. Um, this is kind of a, a a great position to kind of siege with Ravages. Is, is where nearby Chip with Chance's army is. You know, it's, it's kind of hard because there's one pathway down here, except if you go all the way around the other third base. And um, Chance, with this uh, ground based unit composition, he's going to have a bit of trouble kind of controlling the map. He has the mobility of Stalkers, but against, you know, this many Broodlords are about to pop, Blink Stalkers, you need something extra. Oh yeah, you definitely do, and I imagine he's going to start working towards that with their Stargates, but he hasn't really been producing from them yet. He hasn't really committed to any kind of tech, whether it's going into Void Rays or going straight into Tempest or anything like that. He just doesn't know. At the same time, ooh, Warprism gets into the main base. Massive Zealot Warp in, and this is going to buy Chance a lot of time. At the same time, he's also pushing in with his main army. Yeah, that's right, and Jory's in a bit of an awkward position himself. He's being forced all the way back to the main. He's got some units outside the main of Chance as well. And I feel like this push here, unless, you know, Gogo Jory gets back in a position, there's only a couple of Broodlords out, he's going to lose his base. And given the economy situation, that's pretty huge, Light. Yeah, it really is. Unless Gogo Jory may try to go for a surround, he finally cleans up everything in his main base, but no, he just sends everything back home. <laughs> okay, never mind. He's just, he's just focusing on his defense right now. But I, it, it may still be okay just because that Broodlord count, Broodlord count is slowly getting higher and higher. Yeah, that's right. This is the part of the game where it kind of starts to, you know, unit composition starts to matter a little bit more. We've got a Zealot run by towards the top, going to try and snipe another hatchery. And that should be quite big if he gets it. But I think that, um, I, th I think it'll be able to be held by Joey. But kind of looking at the, you know, the, the game say Joey's actually got a one drone less on the gas. And he's got one drone less at the, at the gas at like the third and the fourth base. So maybe a little bit lacking for gas here, but he's maxed out, which is not the best thing. If you look at his army, um, what do you think of the synergy? Like, cause I'm not sure about uh, Roaches and um, Broodlords. I feel like they have a similar role. Yeah, they kind of do. I'm sure that Gogodre wants to refine his army a little bit more, get rid of the get rid of the Roaches, get some spell casters in. At least I hope so. Um, but he, we just haven't had a major engagement yet. Also, I I could be wrong, but I don't believe. Uh, okay, never mind. Chance has spotted the Great Aspire with that War Prism earlier, so he is aware, and now he finally has some Sky Toss. Yeah, looky here. Um, these DTs actually going to catch these Dark Temper on the left, almost getting killed by sniping Banes. And <laughs> Chance should be aware of you know this army on the left side. I mean, how's he going to maneuver? It looks like he's actually going to be seeing that army back off. He's just going to maybe try and you know consolidate and secure this right hand side of the map and we see on this map ladder this is glittering is this hardwire this is hardwire right <laughs> glittering ashes <laughs> we see that so many times uh, uh you know the, the nine o'clock and the three o'clock base on this map is so important for, for getting to that late game it looks like chance is going to try and, and push in here and maybe snipe this base too but this brood's in position yeah the brood's just happened to be in position it looks like they're going to be able to push that back to ground army but they do take out the hatchery almost get the mineral line with those purification overs but as you said is the real question like uh, does Gogo Joy have the ideal army to push out here because he defends but he doesn't counterattack he's still stuck here at home still working on more broods and I worry because earlier there was a position where Gogo Joy had like a 70 supply lead and Chance has closed that and he's kind of getting just a, a stronger army overall yeah, that's right and I, I think that as you said you know this army it's it's a little bit awkward um, you've, you've got like Ravages are great and, and Banes are very supply efficient, but you've got Schrodinger's Ravages and the, the Roaches. It's kind of, mm. you know, 15, that's 30 supply. That's just, it could be, you know, used a little bit more effectively to synergize well with the Broodlords. Um, yeah. he, one thing his army does have going for him is really great mobility as we see Chance actually catch these Roaches here on the left-hand side, which might be a blessing this guy's for Joey. But um, it looks like his choice of tech here is going to be Infestors. Like, do you think you'll add Vipers as well? Or do you think he's just going to... Kind of dive heavy on these. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with just the Infestors for the time being. Uh, as you said, at least it does clear up that supply, but the Infestors aren't here yet, and Chance, it looks like he's going to be able to deny it on maybe even another base for free. Vipers are on the way, but oh, that's not what they want to be popping out. 
Oh, yeah, true. And this is quite <laughs> an awkward position here, actually, for Chance. We see there's no high tempo on the field. Yeah. He doesn't have a way to really effectively engage these Vipers. Sorry, these Brood Lords. Like, and these Ravagers on the right side catching a Zealot run by Great Bruce by Joey. Yeah, you could argue that Chance is maybe being a little bit too passive with his, uh, or less, he should be a little bit more ambitious with his carriers. I don't know if you noticed, but one of his, one of his carriers got yoinked and it just like flew back and almost no damage was dealt. Like, there's very little <laughs> anti air here. Like, <laughs> like, if Chance wanted to, he probably could have killed all those Brood Lords. I, he just, I think he just assumed that there was a flock of corruptors there. Yeah, Corruptors, even um, Spools or Queens. We see some Queens being supplemented to the army now too. And these Ravagers, you know, they're not as dispensable as, as um, Roaches. You don't really want to lose them, but it looks like it's exactly what's going to happen. And <laughs> they just Ugh. they disappear. A couple of cool miles there, but um, not, not a great trade. But we see that um, Chance is now going to be adding in some Tempest Light. So maybe recognizing the Broodlords, recognizing Joey's going for the slow game, yeah. maybe he's trying to get a foot ahead and get a mothership in Tempest. So. I'm, I'm so afraid for Gogo Joy right now because, as you said, Chance is transitioning away from Ground Toss. Gogo Joy still has a mainly anti Ground Toss army. Like, there are too many Broodlords at this point. There's what? Hold on, let me quickly check here. There's 11 Broodlords. You don't. Like, that's. that's so, there's so much supply in that. And they do have their role, don't get me wrong. But, like, the carriers are going to be the next big problem. And we are working on more Corruptors and Queens. But is it too little too late? It depends if Chance gives him time. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. We see this little mobile stalker force as well, being able to keep tabs on this army. Uh, as, as you said, you'd probably be happy to see just how many broods are, are kind of in this army that Joey has. And unless he's going to go for some sort of very, very heavy investor play where he just cleans up everything on the ground and, and neurals most of the air units, you know, turn that strength into a weakness. I, I agree with you, Light. I think with no, no kind of solid spore formation and the economic kind of situation that Joey's in, only on 65 drones. I'm really liking the position here for Chance. Yeah, yeah, it, it's looking really strong, especially now that he does have his Light Templar. He has Storm as well. So everything that he was missing in the last fight, he now has. Top left hand base is going to go down immediately, and now it's going to be on Joey, and maybe the, the, the Yoinks, the Ducks, oh, oh, they get feedbacked! <laughs> when the storms too, and Joey's army is really clumped up here, taking a lot of damage, and and Chance, you know, he could even just recall out of here if he wants to. There's not a lot of DPS in the air, but it looks like he's just gonna wander away. And there's a, a lot of corruptors, but still a lot of storms and carriers in this army, like. Yeah, there really is. What I will say is that the Broodlords killed every single Archon, so now the corruptors are gonna have an easier time dancing with the army. But I just, there are only 12 Corruptors. I don't know if that's enough. Maybe with the Queens with Transfuse. Maybe if Gogo Joey has the control. Oh, oh. what? Are you seeing in the top right what I see? Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> is he going to do it? I was hoping it was a War Prism or something. But no, it's the Mama Ship. We see a mass recall into the main base. Uh, we do have a couple of Corruptors here in position. But oh, some of them get picked off as they come out of the eggs. Yeah, actually, look at this slide. It's, it's, I'm not really sure yeah. about how this is going to work out. There's a lot of corruptors, and he's going to snipe the hive for sure. And he's going to zell it up by right where his army was before on the left side. But, oh, no! Oh, he doesn't have High Templar to deal and Oh, my like this. Mate, the High Templar running out of energy. They're, they're running out of energy. I don't think they can they can feed back anymore. They're being dealt with, and we need a couple of neurals, and there we go. Oh, and Neural's coming down, and Chance, he can recall, but he's going to be forced to come in here. Neural's coming. The War Prism is reinforcing Stalkers, but this might be the fight that uh, Joey needed, but it looks like he's running out of anti-air. Yeah, like, we thought that Chance wanted to come back in this game, but we were wrong. He just he just recalled into the main base, gave up his army, and the Corruptors are going to clean everything up. Oh, my days. These Stalkers oh. are coming in. Wow. Well, I... <laughs> It looks like these Corruptors, they will clean up the air that the Stalker's on there. There's some very valuable units here. There's some Indefestors and Stalkers nearby. Meanwhile, a Zealot run by on the left-hand side, sniping that top left base again. And looking at the supply light, I think, yeah, the tail is being told. And GG, chance with this economic discrepancy, manages to take game one. GG, well played. Oh, that was so close. Like, that was uh, brave. Like, I, like, mate, I'll be honest. When I, when I saw after after Joey won that big fight in the mid game, that massive fight, and decided to stay back with and wait for the Greater Spire, I, the entire time I was like, mate, you're up against Chance. You smell blood in the water. You want to go. <laughs> you don't understand the kind of player that Chance. You don't want to give him a chance to come back. Oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> oh. And Stop that's it. what he did. Let's I remember he had one robot producing. He had like two disruptors and like a handful of stalkers, and that's it. And Joey was like at like 170 supply, and and Chance was like at 120. Like there was there was a big opportunity, and Joey was like, you know what? I'll wait for Brood Lords. And 
Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, we kind of see chance you know one of the reasons he transitioned the late game so kind of well is because he, he didn't he's very middle of the road as he said yeah. he has one robo one stargate he kind of sussed out what go go joe was doing before committing where um you know joey just committed hard to those brood lords and then just stuck around and when you tech when you do such a dramatic kind of tech shift in your army unit composition you really want to push and make advantage of it but he just kind of chilled and, and then we saw chance just build up his sky toss army and yeah and yeah it went from there but uh, hopefully, you know, <laughs> hopefully the armies are a bit more balanced this time around. Spawning in the top left position, it is your red Protoss. He is currently, I believe, teamless light. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it won't last long. You will get picked up for sure. Representing himself, it is the Korean Protoss Chance. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Curious Minds LE, we have the Hong Kong player himself representing the Juggernauts. It is Gogo -Go Joey. And despite Joey being down in this series, I just want to say that I am very impressed and I'm happy to see Joey despite, you know, being a little bit more out of practice, despite being on a hiatus. Like game one, there's a world out there where he takes that game. Like, like I, I, I'm just impressed that he was able to look that good against the player of the caliber of chance. Yeah, I have to keep in mind, you know, even though this is round one, chance is, you know, he's he'd be a favorite to take you know the semi-finals for sure and even go into the finals and yeah. um this isn't just your, your typical kind of um you know round one stomp this is even though it's a very strong player joey is showing what he's made of he's a very uh, meticulous player he's very good with his his, his t1 his link run buys especially um so i agree with you lad i, I kind of feel like as we we go into the series more i feel like joey's gonna grow more and more and you saw he had a very clean uh, early and mid game so far. I just want to see if he can keep that up going to game number two. Yeah, yeah, I hope so as well. And like for me, that's kind of like one of the purposes of a tournament like this. Like uh, one of one of the like grand plans that I had. It was you know, I, 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 more often than not, we don't see like Southeast Asian and Oceanic players go up against you know players from outside their own region. Um, they're very kind of like uh, secluded in a way. Um, and it's great to see how they perform against some of these other pros, some of these other Koreans, and I, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mastermind to, to kind of take down the Korean scene, <laughs> or the C scene, that they're the dominant, the dominant brand in Oceania, South Get rid of all that inflated man. MMR, mate, you know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's right. But meanwhile, we see here, like, um, a little, little tiny skill check. Um, it, it, if sometimes you see Protoss, they'll throw down a pylon to deny the third base, and if Zerg only makes two Zerglings, the Adept can get there in time to block. So, um, just a very small thing. Some really greedy Zergs might just go for two Ling openers, but, um, just a small little interaction, um, making sense of it. But yeah, we see four Links come out, pylon gets cancelled again, and Joey gets his third base. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly, uh, it, kind of a correction, something that I noticed that was a bit of a mistake. That wasn't a cancel. Uh, Chance lost, oh. that, that pylon died. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> so a little bit of a slip up there because of that. I, 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 I don't know if it's necessarily worth it for Chance. Um, meanwhile, ooh, even almost loses an adept there. Yeah, when you said little slip up, I thought it was years, you know that meme, years of academy training wasted, I've got it wrong, but actually that is quite a slip up chance, not cancelling the pylon, and um, he does manage to get both of these adepts home, and the third adept in the wall will keep the second adept alive, uh, shield battery down too, now he has to relinquish map control, and it looks like Oracle will be the tech of choice for chance. Yes, yes, once again, just like the previous game, we do have that Oracle zooming across the map. If we remember last game, uh, 20 minutes ago, he, they did get three drone kills and a larva. We'll see how it does here in game number two, um, as once again, the, the natural base is a little bit exposed and oh, he will get one transferring drone. Yeah, one drone down so far. Spore does drop at the uh, the third base. But I'm guessing this this Oracle maybe get another drone if Joey is. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Two workers, but um, so far pretty reasonable defense by Joey here, and um, yeah, that's just what happens when you, you kind of skip the spore at the natural. Um, because it's, it's the least likely position for a person to dive in. But 
Three orc, three drones. I'm keeping the oracle alive. You know, not the best, but not the worst. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's the least likely likely place, but because it's least likely, like at highest level, that's where they're gonna go. Like <laughs> Chance knows that, and he knows you know that, and that's where sometimes the mind games come in. Um, meanwhile, at the same time, Gojo was able to delay the third base a little bit with his lings once again, but nowhere near as long as the previous game. So Chance tightening up a little bit more here uh, with his play. Yeah, we did actually chance he floated. He almost went up to 700 minerals there. So he really, his plan really relied on getting that third base down. And there we see now we got the Twilight, the Forge, the Robo throwing down all the tech. It could be looks like looking like a, a ground base unit composition again, Light. Um, his Adept's just going to keep our Zerg play a bit on us as he gets his own Evolution Chamber in Roach Warren. So expect to see a cancel of the Shade here. And yeah. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't He doesn't want to get surrounded, so he will back off. Almost gets a queen, but not quite, not quite. And as you said, like, this is one of the, one of my favorite things about Chance is that it's a little bit more refreshing. He's not really one to go into that sky toss composition. This is his own style of playing. Meanwhile, ooh, double oracle gets into the main base and six drones get picked up. Yeah, unfortunately, that red health oracle from early does get taken out, but as long as he has... <coughs> Oh, excuse me. As long as he has one to kind of, you know, keep tabs on the map and kind of put on the revelations and pressure on the Zerg, you know, it'll work out good for him. And meanwhile, Joey's going back into what he did in the previous game, but he's also getting plus one rate, uh, range. He's getting a Spire Light, so it could be more Roach Muta shenanigans. Ooh, interesting. This time, it has remained unscattered. We'll see if that remains to be the case, because as you said, that Oracle is still alive, so there's always a chance that it will be able to get into that natural and get a revelation on yeah meanwhile we see here um there's no no um fourth base here yet for joey our zerg player oh actually there he is at the top right now so um see very kind of um very kind of liney <laughs> he's kind of a straight line the zerg player and it could be um vertical that's it yeah i like straight liney it sounds more scientific <laughs> um and meanwhile chance he's just gonna get gases at his own third base so expect again Bit of a macro game, this, this void ray in the main, it's it's, it's charged up for some reason. Um, there we go, it's cancelled. It's probably keeping an overlord or something, I don't know. Yeah, there was, there was an over here that, that they did. Over yeah, there we go. Okay, I just I just saw it <laughs> looking angry. So, um, and here, this, this Phoenix Scout's gonna come oh, in and scout the spire. Beautifully done here by chance. Once again, he confirms the spire, but this time it was too late. Goga Joey already made the mutas, so he can't, you know, decide to avoid that kind of tech or anything like that. And now he has to rely on these mutas actually dealing damage. This time, Chance doesn't take any chances, and he makes a Phoenix. <laughs> he watch, watch it, boy. <laughs> His Chance bonds. <laughs> but, um, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you, what do you mean? We have, um, yeah, it looks like um, Joey's going to be heading towards the, the bottom bottom side here with is quite a sizable force and um it's a lot of sentries but there's no stalkers here the stalkers are in the main and the void ray and yeah he will pick up the muters here he should move the rest of his army down um but he's actually gonna move out to meet here and oof. chance being a chad and taking a chance on open ground <laughs> awful <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go. But yeah, beautiful positioning by a chance he was able to force Gogo's way back. He also had tabs on the Mutas, so so far, Mutas haven't really done anything. They killed an Oracle, and that's kind of it so far. And I, I guess they are forcing up Phoenixes and forcing static defense, but ideally you want so much more than that. Um, so yeah, we'll see if the Mutas can get anything done. Thankfully, Gogo Joey, he did invest in plus on range, so he is working on his own ground army instead. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the production tab for, for Joey at the moment, Light, and oh, it's, it's, it's going down now, but it was huge. You know, he's getting all this stuff done behind these muters. Um, I like what Chance has done after confirming the, the muters. He started chronobusing out Phoenix, but he's also going disruptors behind this. I mean, you know, like, muter, uh, muter into Roach is such a big kind of... Oh, these muters getting caught here. Gonna have a bit of a, a run around. This disruptor could be in a bit of trouble, but the shield battery will keep it safe. But yeah... yeah. Mutas and, and Roaches, are, they're very heavily, they're very different when it comes to tech switching. They both have two different roles, which make it quite a decisive um, choice. These Mutas might get picked off, actually. And I think it's great that Chance has realized that and you know, 
bolstered his ground force while dealing with his air units too. Yeah, it's so important as a Protoss player to recognize whether or not the, your opponent is committed to muters or not, right? Like you need to recognize how much you need to invest in anti-air and how much in anti-ground. Um, so now, now he's cleaned up all the muters. He's well aware that he needs disruptors of all things. Um, I did notice that uh, this time he did cut immortal production much earlier. He only has two immortals with this army and we have a second Robo, so again, he's, he's gonna be able to at least remax, rebuild if a fight doesn't necessarily go his way, or even just snowball that much harder. Yeah, Chance, he's, he's playing, um, he, he's he's not really committed, he's got some some disruptors now, he's now going to Colossus now, even High Templar morphing, warping in, but he's not really committing to, to one kind of tech, he's keeping himself a little bit flexible, uh, these Phoenix will pick up some drones, and even though these Muters are dead light, these Phoenix are actually still you know, very valuable, because they can pick up Infestors or uh, Queens or something, they have a lot of scouting intel that they can give around, because uh, Joey's just skipping Hydralis, but at the meantime, you know, Joey's going to go for the kill here, so oh, yeah. we'll see what happens. Like. Exactly, he's going to go for, again, another pseudo surround. There is an overcharge, there's a shield battle. He's going for it! He's going to try and collapse on the army! Oh my god, can the Bailey's find the connections? The force field stopped them! Oh. <laughs> so force field's going down, and the Ravager Biles... And the chance actually retreating into his fourth base there, but there was Bane's coming for the mineral line to flank him. And this is like a really good trade here for for, jo for Joey, but uh, the Stalker's reinforced and he won't be able to clean this up. A lot of disruptors going down, but the Colossus remain tall. Yeah, uh, was it worth it? That's the big question because Chance will defend, but he lost all of his sentries, he lost all of his disruptors, a lot of his Isaac units, but he did keep two Colossus alive, and now he's just going for it. He is diving deep into Crete. Yeah, he is too, and Chance, he needs to be a little bit risky here, however, he does have some really great units in the Phoenix, you know, to look ahead and the Colossus, but you're going deep on creep with no warp prism and no um, force fields, it could make, even recalling would take some damage as you get out of there. But, oh! So, uh, oh, this Colossus get picks off. But... Colossus, mate, mate, he's going for it, the Queens, the Baileys are rolling on in, as you said, there is no way out, and just like that, the Baileys crash into everything, and the Protoss army is going to be cleaned up. Is, is indeed the only things left are a couple of phoenix this queen's shooing away and and chance like his tech has just been reset now he does have a couple extra um, you know tech buildings you did point out so he can reinforce faster but the the imminent threat is going to be hitting here before he can get some more out Oh, exactly. Meanwhile, a bit of a zealot run back. It's a kill on the fresh base of Gogo Joy, keeping him on four bases. What's important, though, is that even though Gogo Joy lost some hatcheries, he didn't lose any drones. He, he was doing a great job at keeping all those workers alive, so he doesn't have to worry about rebuilding them. And now, this time, he's not going to stay at home and take up the Broodlords. This time, he's going for the kill. Yeah, that's right. These queens are off a creep. There are a lot of links, not many banes, uh, but these queens are going to just transfuse through the pain. This disruptor is kind of not doing anything at the moment. Uh, this is shield daddy, but it's unpowered by And this is so much Zerg just hitting this fourth base. Oh, uh, there's so much Zerg. Nice dodges on those purification novas. The Baileys are rolling in once again. Overcharge does nothing. And with these queens, the queen walk. Uh, we're not going to see this for too much longer, but, you know, appreciate it while we can. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sure Chance appreciates that. That's for sure. <laughs> but on these zealots, you know, if, if Chance can get enough units, there's not a lot of DPS actually in this force here. He might even be able to save the fourth base, but I think that oh, it's going to be close, and it looks like Chance might just target it down. Oh, uh, we'll Ling's reinforcing. Yeah, the Ling's reinforcing should be enough. The Nova goes up. Oh, misses. Oh. Tries to target down those Ling's. Another Nova. It's going to get the Queens. Yeah, that's right. His fourth base is still standing. Joey peeling off some units to attack it now, but I think Chance is going to be able to hold on here. But if you look at the supply line and the <laughs> trail of blue on the map, I think this is where we might just see the end. This disruptor is getting forced up. Yeah. And it's just gateway units here. Exactly. Like, Chance defends that as natural, but at what cost? He lost the fourth base. He's still stuck on three base economy, and there's just so much Zerg all over the map. Last game, there was barely any creep. Joey, he is all over the map right now, and. I don't know what Chance can do to get back into this. He does have two, uh, uh, a War Prism and two Novas, two Disruptors, and a Dream. Let's go. Disruptors. <laughs> <laughs> you can never let, oh! oh! <laughs> no, like, where, where, where the two Novas? <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> and GG, Joey takes game number two. Oh, wow. Very decisive display there by our Hong Kong Zerg light to oh. tie up the series. Let's go, Ace Match, mate, it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i saw lord loken in the chat earlier papa loken i'm sure he's proud as well seeing his kids kind of spread their wings and f and fly and 
I, I, I'm happy to see Goga Joy again. Not as passive as he was in the previous game, you know? He, he, he had that killer instinct here in game two. Yeah, I think that's that's a core thing you kind of point out from the first game. Um, Joey, he reached the mid game in a good position last game as well. You know, he kind of dealing with that push at the fourth, delaying his muters, and um, he just kind of sat back. And, um, Chance felt a bit more comfortable, but um, as you said in this game, like um, Joey, he kind of had that killer instinct. He saw opportunity and and he dived on it. So he took a chance. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> And meanwhile, we do have to give a shout out to Lord Loken, um, who we just touched on, contributing $65 to the oh. prize pool for the Sparkling Tuna Cup number six. So uh, you get a couple finger guns and our appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> please, please know you. Is, is it pronounced GIF or GIF, Light? It's GIF, right? It's a GIF. It's a, it's a, is it a GIF oh, or is it a GIF? No, it's a GIF. It's, it's, it's a like GIF. Avengers. It's like <laughs> Civil War. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. But thank you, Loken. Much appreciated. The players would appreciate that too. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Lord Loken. He's one of the biggest supporters on our channel. If you want to be like Lord Loken, then head on over to the Matrino page, exclamation mark Matrino in the chat. There are no coupon codes, but you can contribute to the prize pool nonetheless. Indeed. And who doesn't like contributing to things? <laughs> I'm going to contribute right now and say this morning in the <laughs> top left position. He is teamless, but he is a machine. It is your South Korean Protoss. Can he take the next game? It is Chance. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Berlingrad LE, we have the Hong Kong Zerg player representing the Juggernauts. It is Gogo -Go Joey. Ah. Oh. 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 Pro, pro block. I know. It feels bad. Man. Loves. Yeah, that probe must love contributing. <laughs> the Zerg's pain, but um, yeah, Joey doesn't care, just kind of takes the base again. And if we, we look at this um, position of this third base again, it's very passive. Um, Joey's been pretty passive with his, his third base. He's not, you know, if you want to go for a, a Queen Walk, Queen Walk is not very the most popular on this map, but you take him more forward base to get that creep spread going. Mm -hmm. um, Chance has gone Stargate every game series so far, but he has transitioned into ground, so. Um, on the map, it's kind of this, this more small. Do you think that will, you know, work in his favor, or do you think he might change it up this timeline? That's a good question, right? Because I would, I would, uh, you know, kind of agree with you in a way and say that yeah, a ground focused army on a short map. I mean, it has its advantages, right? It's stronger, it hits faster. Um, I wanna, I wanna say that it will do better. But at the same time, chances had mixed success with it. So, so in his mind, it may be time to mix things up. Yeah, I think that's, um, it remains to be seen. We do have Warp Gate kind of uh, dropping down straight away this time around. It's not going to be delaying it to go for that Stargate. Um, it could be even DT or, or more popular. You see Adept's kind of starting to open on this map. And, um, it does remain still to be seen as he gets 100 gas in the bank. What's Chance going to do? So, whoops, Stargate, maybe a bit of mind games in the way if he follows up with a Stalker here. But Joey's just going to come straight on in. So, um, mm. Yeah, nothing too crazy happening so far, except for, you know, a delayed warp gate. <laughs> Which actually, that is, that is not crazy at all. <laughs> but um, one little cute thing I will point out, like, uh -huh. Chance actually cancelled his warp gate, put the oh. Stargate down, and then started again. So, oh. that's pretty crazy, right? That's that's insane, mate. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure, buddy. Uh <laughs> <laughs> No, but yeah, yeah, we'll, I, I'm curious to see like if he's going to commit here or like how much he will commit to that Stargate because he was trying to keep it a little bit hidden, hidden that little bit longer. This will get scouted and ooh, for the first time this series, he's not going for Oracle first. Yeah, no, it actually looks like Chance wants to win the game here, so he's making a Void Ray. Uh -huh, um, yeah, smart. Very pop popular kind of strategy. And we see um, Joey with this Queen, he's kind of, this Creep Tumor, it's, it's more kind of... Out of the way, normally you see Zerg try and connect the creep between their bases. They want to get that kind of territory. But if you're going for Ling Speed, you know, I guess it's... You kind of have that map control anyway. So I can understand uh, wanting to spread the creep out further onto the map. Um, I'll see that void right now in the top left corner. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see what happens here. We just got a lot of queens coming. A lot of mineral-based 
you know, it's being built. Yeah, yeah, everything's looking pretty standard for the most part for Gogo Joey. Unfortunately, it looks like, oh, oh <laughs> never mind. I was going to be like, he doesn't have his second overload in the most hidden of places, so he may lose it, and Chance was looking for it, but so far, you know, Gogo Joey's overload just, he, he sucked it in. He was like, <gasps> yeah, he like, went up against the wall, and then, yeah, he didn't get noticed. Yeah, and then we see this is actually a very fast third base going down that Chance might be able to, so not Chance, Gogo Joe might be able to scout soon. Um, a very little high level thing that we saw there, when um, Joey scouted the Stargate, he actually sent the Overlord straight to the top left of the, the map and does just yeah. slow down that Void Rage just a little bit. Uh, Oracle now coming in. It's yeah. not going to get shooed away. This time at the natural, there is a spore, so the Oracle doesn't get any damage. Of course, it was a later Oracle, to be fair, so it wasn't expected to get damage done. Meanwhile, we don't have a second Stargate. We do have that Twilight Council instead, but Joey, with this Overlord, he can dive in. He can attempt to get a scout off. Ooh, as we have Glaive and Epps. Oh, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> what a tease. It's going to be blink, actually. Look at this. Like, that is a lot of queens. Because some of these are going to take one hit and just turn around. That's the chickens. <laughs> Show up. The oh, shit. <laughs> we got we to gotta get home, boys. <laughs> it's like two, two queens per adept, and um, I'm not not too fond of, of kind of a, a queen walk on this map because as we see, there's only one position that, that Joey can really push here. You just put down some shield barriers that protects both your you know your natural and the third base because that's where these queens are going, right? Mm -hmm, exactly. But, um, and I love this as well. Chance as a response, he immediately threw down a dark shrine as, as soon as he saw the queen walk coming. And I just noticed there is no lair, there is no mobile detection. Yeah, that's right. There's only one Void Rand. Chance actually hasn't thrown down any more shield batteries, so he's actually going for Adept Run by Light, but there's Queen, there's Lynx here just waiting for it, and I think the Sir base is going to die no matter what. Yeah, exactly. They do commit to shape, but they get surrounded. The Oracles are going to help out the Adepts and try and do whatever they can, but the Adepts will be cleaned up. As you said, this third base, it's dead, mate. There's no shield batteries whatsoever. We do have a couple here at the Natural, and the Dark Shrine is going to finish up, but, I mean, he loses the third. Yeah, these queens really haven't had anything to fight this whole time. There was one Void Ray, but they've yeah. still got stacks of energy. And even though there's Shield Barriers at the front here, you know, the army's here, but the Dark Shrine finishes just up now, and there's two DTs warping in. Yeah, two DTs, sometimes that is all you need. As you said, there's a lot of energy for Transfuse, so it's going to take a while for the DTs to clean everything up. So damage is still being done. The Oh my god, the Sentry gets sniped by the Files. But again, go go Joey. Uh, he's got to turn around. I don't know, man. He's going to lose everything. Yeah, that's the problem. He's committed so much into these queens. They're gonna, they, they can't retreat. They're gonna die no matter what. And he doesn't know what to do with his army. You see, Chance is actually focusing down the, the, um, the ravages with that one Dark Templar, forcing the army to fully retreat now. And, and Chance, it looks like now he's gonna clean up, you know, these these queens. And actually, he just takes the third base now, and he's looking in quite a good position. Yeah. It's not bad, you know, Gogo Joey doesn't have the the most uh, significant worker lead whatsoever. Um, there is a decision at home, so these DTs shouldn't get any more damage done. But again, Chance survives, um, and he didn't lose too much. He lost eight probes, and that's kind of it. Unfortunately, he didn't have, like, Void Rays at home to counterattack, to, like, capitalize and maybe even win the game after killing all the queens. Um, but he lives, regardless. That he does indeed, and we see oh. there's a lot of red dots all over the map. A little jump into the main here using the void ray. He might even snipe the overseer if he wants to. Yes, he will. Oh my god, he does get the overseer. He's gonna get the spawning pool. Oh, uh, he might. Oh, he's gonna trade the void ray for it though. It looks it's just gonna barely time out. There we go. Uh. He's gonna lose the void. Meanwhile, we got a TT's running to the main, sniping the swap. It's like running to the third base, and this uh, overseer is about to finish up, but. You know, the damage has been done. 10 drones and a spawning pool. That is you know, a couple of queens too, like. Yeah. And these stalkers, though, they do get surrounded. Oh my god. I mean, Blink does kind of get them out of there in the end. Gogo Joy will finally clean everything up. Uh, what I will say is that his drone count is still looking okay. It, it, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's not amazing, <laughs> though. It's not amazing. Uh, he's going for a counter attack. Maybe he can get some damage done. Yo, the wall is not a wall. God. Oh, the links, the links, the links, they're gonna get in. Oh no, the wall is still not a wall. Uh, and these stalkers <laughs> are still kind of out of position, but this one Dark Templar, he'll eventually clean up. But how many pros can, can Joey take out here? Uh, yeah. A lot of pros, mate, a lot of pros. Meanwhile, ooh, the Ravager army is gonna get caught out by all these stalkers. So, Gogo Joey's gonna lose his entire army here, but he does get a lot of damage done. Will he survive the counterattack though? Like